and after the parley boy and the ferex baby i am going to speak to you about some fractures some of the other regions are going to be sp spoken to uh, spoken about by other legends which are who are sitting here and this is what was left for me to talk and i am going to talk to you about uh, a short story of my experiments with p1 shaft fractures so this was a young gentleman around 30 years old a direct injury skin is lacerated bone is fractured so obviously something in between was also lacerated had a extensor tendon laceration i needed to choose a method which would allow me to treat the tendon injury appropriately as well and the best thing that i could think of at this point was a intramedullary compression screw much like a scaphoid fracture there is there is not much difference between this head fragment as compared to say a proximal pole of the scaphoid so why not fix it that way and this allowed me to repair the extensor tendon well and go ahead with the extensor tendon rehabilitation so stable fixation for the purpose of treating tendon injury not so lucky this time this was a motorcycle accident came at the peak of uh, covid pandemic and i was wondering what to do for this and this open wound on the volar side had the flexor tendon actually going through the fractures it, it was interposed the pulley structure was completely destroyed and this is what i did yeah i mean you, i just decided to create a very stable base for this commutative phalanx to move and the phalanx was treated only by meticulous soft tissue repair i just repaired whatever soft tissue i could cylindrically around the fracture and i left it to heal knowing fully well that this might require some secondary reconstruction and this was him at 3 months it's a united fracture it's grotesque looking but the function is good he has a extension lag and a flexion deformity sonography tells me that there is a extension tendon adhesion as well as the central slip is divided so he is now scheduled for extensor tendon tenolysis and repair and of course there will be a skin contracture release that also will be done at the same time this was another patient who i saw very recently and on he was just 2 days old he is in his 30s again and on presentation this is without any anesthesia he could move this much in the opd more than 50% movement there is some amount of pseudo cloying that you can see in the index finger and when they move so well more than 50% of active movement without any anesthesia and the fracture is well aligned there is no deformity i think this is a very strong case for conservative treatment so i instantly knew i had to just body taping and then of course after you tape you again check the alignment and you ask them to move again and you, you at again when he was extending there was some amount of pseudo cloying so again i knew i don't want to allow him to extend too much so i would put him in a slab again move i think that this one mantra for phalangeal fractures is you should be able to move them early no matter what treatment you choose you could choose plates you could choose intramedullary wires but what is important is move it if you are if you don't move it you are going to lose it that so you 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 could use intramedullary k wires ball and bandage whatever at the end of it you have to just say will i be able to move this early enough to prevent flexor tendon adhesion that's the method that you need to choose thank you very much